Hello there. Welcome back to my channel, Snips by Kelly. I'm Kelly, and tonight I have a cute single page for you here that is a classic wreath design. It won't be heavy duty or hard to recreate tonight. It's going to be a simple one, but so much fun. So we're going to be using our March, April season mix-ins. You can see the coordinating colors up here at the top. So we have Periwinkle, Honey Butter, Seabrook, sage and we have a great gingham pattern a, a diagonal stripe clouds hearts a little bit of a wallpaper design we have um i think hearts if i didn't say that already and these are designed these are papers that are designed to either be standalone papers for individual projects but they also are designed carefully designed to coordinate with our two main lines in each catalog so we have the let's go anywhere collection and we have some papers within the season mix-ins that coordinate perfectly with that collection and then the other papers in the collection coordinate perfectly with honey bunny which is the second Second featured collection in our March and April idea book and some of those cross over and actually would coordinate well with either so you can add those papers to our current collections to stretch those or to create add additional fun colors to those collections or you can create using those season mix-ins alone so tonight we're going to create with those season mix-ins and I've been recreating featured artwork in our idea book and I've been having Having so much fun with that. We're going to create this ba basic wreath style layout using our In Springtime Stampin' Thin Cuts, which is an amazing Stampin' Thin Cut set that I, I believe it's 14 thin cuts in here that are spring related. So you have classics, you have umbrellas, clouds, boots, birds, carrots, uh, frogs, butterflies, bees and uh, butterflies, ladybugs, uh, sunshine, really, really cute and classic springtime icons. We're also going to use the Spring Has Sprung stamp set, which has all kinds of spring sentiments on it. Now, I've actually created a 7x7 seven seven inch circle, which is smaller than the featured art. The reason I made it smaller is because I wanted to use a 5x7 photo, and my Picture Mate 400 is the photo printer that I have at home that creates the 5x7, and I cut the circle on the Cricut in periwinkle blue and I actually stamped beautiful memories in intense black on the bottom. Now I used most of that photo, um, the five by seven and a little bit showing on the bottom. And then I created an eight by eight inch white daisy circle with some Cricut pen on the outside on the Cricut as well. Now I'll link that des design space file in the description down below here. Uh, but any method that you have to create your circles is great great or you can also grab my free design space file and just quickly grab those circles so you don't have to think about those and recreate those. So in the uh, featured layout they have a ballerina background 12 by 12 and 11 and 3 quarters by an 11 and 3 quarters rosy cardstock. Rosy is from our current annual core catalog really pretty and then they have 11 and a half by 11 and a half uh, gingham periwinkle season mix-ins and then of course the 8 by 8 and the 7 by 7 inch circle and then again I put beautiful memories stamped that in black below now in the original they didn't use up near as much of the circle and my guess is that it was an eight and a half by 11 inch photo that they cut down now I did reach back in my stash to some stitched labels here. We had stitched brackets and stitched labels or stitched frames here, and I wanted to put the title on that. Now, what I did to save time is I made a handmade cheat sheet for you of all of the tri -bent blend colors that I used on all of these icons. Now, I only created one icon of each item in the In Springtime Stamp and Thin Cut set, except for the boots I doubled, the sun, I doubled, the clouds I doubled, and the butterflies I doubled. And so I thought I would make a cheat sheet that you could pause the video and take a screenshot of because sometimes it's really nice to have somebody 
um, sort out colors for us to give us a jumping off point. Now, of course, you can coordinate your papers, your cardstock, and your marker colors with your photo. I just happen to have this great photo with two of my grandkids wearing a rosy colored raincoats as well as an umbrella with horses on them that are rosy colored. So what are the odds that I would have that one perfect photo for these exact colors. So feel free to change up the background cardstock as well as the season mix-in pattern as well as the tri-blend colors to coordinate with your photo. So I actually created a large ballerina frame, stitch frame, and a large white daisy frame and a smaller white daisy frame to put the words springtime on, popped up one pair of the boots that I colored with the tri-blend markers. Now the umbrella I actually stamped twice. I stamped the umbrella once on the periwinkle crisscross season mix-ins pattern and once on white daisy. I trimmed off the handle of the periwinkle pattern and popped up the top of the umbrella onto the white daisy to really give that a really cute effect. And then the only thing left in a wreath style layout is basically to arrange all the pieces around in a wreath. Now you can go up and over the entire circle. You can do half of the circle or three quarters of the circle, whatever fits best with your photos, depending on where your subject are in the photos you may want to go up a little higher or you may want to do a half circle it's all a personal preference but that is all the heavy lifting the heavy lifting was really in the coloring that's pro and that wasn't even really heavy lifting it's just probably what took the most time i'm going to add a couple little banners to the upper left hand side and i'm opting to leave it super simple it's very understated but it doesn't need anything else because of all of that springtime color all the way around the photo all of the color in the photo and the colorful background less is more i think with this and i've been having so much fun recreating artwork from the catalog that i actually did um, a video here a couple weeks ago with 75 pieces of artwork, not a couple weeks, just about a week, uh, 75 pieces of artwork that I recreated from the catalog. And I did my change ups. I changed up some patterns. I added some companion pages and I made some changes and some of them I kept identical. I left the artwork the same because I loved the featured art. So I'm going to link that in the description and you can go back and check. And I'm working through each of those pieces of art with process videos to help you all figure out what they did in that featured art, which is such a fun and easy thing to do to go through the idea book and recreate that art. You'll have so many cute pages and cards. And then I've also created lots of wreath style layouts, some of them much more um, involved than the one that you're seeing here tonight with lots of extra detail and some of them just as simple. And I'll link all of my wreath style videos that I can find up in the description as well. It's such a classic and timeless way to highlight a featured photo. I really, really love it. So I hope that you will take some time to pick out a photo and recreate this style. Be sure to screenshot my thin cut coloring here. I did traditional easy coloring where I went light with the light marker and then I did a medium over the top and then light over the top of that. But it's really spelled out in my cheat sheet there. But before I do uh, my finishing banners here and I do my close-ups of the layout, I'm gonna share a couple cards also that were made with this collection. So all I've done with the banner here is I had a little leftover banner from the Honey Bunny sticker sheet, and I'm gonna trim that off a little bit. It's a little arrow banner. Then I've made another, it's approximately one and a quarter by one and a quarter dovetailed banner out of the Honey Butter Diagonal pattern in the season mix-ins. And that's really the only thing that I've added to this layout other than some Honey Bunny dots. And I used all of the 
honey butter color honey bunny dots. It's a little bit of a tongue twister. And then I, of course, added my journaling with some of our um, sticker journal, our journal stickers, which I love to use to be able to add journaling. And then for the cards that I'm going to show you here in just a second, just a moment, they also use the In Springtime Stamp and Thin Cut set. And they also use bits and pieces from Spring Has Sprung. But there are some stitched thin cuts that were stitched shapes that were so popular that they actually show, sold out within the first day, I believe, of the launch of our March catalog. And I'm going to show those to you here in a minute because they're featured in cards on this page. And so I'm using some scallop shapes from that set and some circles from that set, and they were so popular. I've used them on so many things already, but don't despair. Even though they sold out, they will be coming back this month. They're scheduled to come back here in March, so you'll be able to grab those up. So I'll show those to you here in just a minute how these three cards were created. So you can see in this set here, there is a scalloped square. There's also a stitched circle, and each of these shapes in this set is stitched. Okay, so those decorative shapes will be coming back soon here in March. Also on the cards and in lots of other artwork in the catalog, we have a dot embossing folder and stencil and a floral embossing folder and stencil. So you can see here on the periwinkle or the wisteria cardstock background, you can see that embossing. And then you can see the scalloped frame from the decorative shapes. Such an easy uh, card, but so cute with that. There are those embossing folders. And then you can see in the, um, I'll show you where those embossing folders are. They're with another one of our springtime sets. So there you can see dot stencil, dot embossing folder, floral stencil, floral embossing folder. And then later on, there is a diagonal embossing folder that worked great with our outlined alphabet. So here you can see the detail and where there's a little bit of stenciling on the sentiment there and a little bit of embossing on the background. On this one, you can see the stitched round, the stitched circle shape that was stamped on, and then the butterflies that are directly from the In Springtime Stampin' Thin Cut set. I love the little strips going across the white daisy paper on the bottom of this card. It's so cute. And of course that uses our season mix-ins paper. And so here we have a slim line. And all I did differently on this one is I did do the paper piecing on this umbrella. I did add the little, um, oh, the ladybug, uh, thin cut there and colored that a color, added a little inking in the background and a little stamping in the background of that, and then added the umbrella, the clouds, and the boot. There's one little sticker from the Honey Bunny collection on the bottom of that slim line is where that one came from, and it made for such a cute collection of projects from these two springtime stamps, uh, stamp one stamp and thin cut, and one stamp set. I had so much fun recreating this. Be sure to check out all 75 pieces of artwork in my reveal video that's linked in there and all of the other process videos that have been posted already or that will be coming up soon. Be sure you hit subscribe and the notifications bell so you don't miss any of those uh, videos coming up soon and be sure to stay tuned right here on Snipped by Snips by Kelly. Thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.